Hey, I'm going to be uh, cutting out uh, some Sasquatch patterns out of this sheet metal here with the plasma cutter. I've, uh, in an earlier video, I showed you how I uh, transferred the pattern onto the steel. And I like to use spray paint because it makes it uh, pretty easy to see when, when you're wearing glasses and you're trying to plasma cut. And also, uh, the plasma cutter uh, won't, tend to, won't tend to destroy the mark like it would if you were had tape or something like that on there. So I'm going to cut out two of these and hopefully one of them will be good. And in my last video, I was cutting out the, uh, the Sasquatch silhouette in uh, some steel panel here. And uh, luckily my plasma cutter cup was worn because I was worried about how I was going to make such a jagged cut. <laughs> but the plasma cutter being worn out like it was, uh, it did a jagged cut just fine. Kind of a pain in the butt, but it did cut it and it left me with pretty much the kind of... Uh, a look I wanted to uh, emulate fur, you know, a fuzzy edge. So I've got the, uh, the silhouette and I've got this uh, EMT conduit here that I'm going to use. I've got a uh, cut a slice down the, the middle of it here and it actually goes into the bottom of this uh, silhouette. And I'm going to experiment around it. It's a tight fit. I'm going to move this around in the end and weld it where I want it to be, where it'll be uh, neutral, balanced, and also respond to the wind. I might actually have to add an arrow and fins on it to get it to respond. Don't know. But uh, this is the piece that attaches to the bottom. And then what I also have, I've got this uh, stainless steel shaft that's going to go up and uh, right along inside. And I have these two be uh, ball bearings. That I'm going to use. There are different size ball bearings. I've got a, uh, a small ball bearing that's going to be right on the top here of this shaft and then there's another a larger ball bearing that's going to be on top of that ball bearing and this will uh, go down in there like that and the ball bearing will actually the bigger ball bearing will actually contact on the base of the surface that's welded across the top and so it'll be a very light friction uh, the weight of two ball bearings with a little oil and this is stainless steel so I don't have to worry about that rusting and this I'm going to paint black and it'll be a weatherized cap actually because it's going to hang down well below the ball bearing and I've also got a, a, a plate here a plug that I'm going to weld along the top here once I fully weld that in to seal it so uh, no water can get in that way theoretically and I've also got a bigger washer here that I'm going to use as I'm going to weld it down here as a collar and I've got this other piece of stainless steel that I'm going to clamp down onto the uh, uh, this other shaft. And it'll basically once I once I clamp that together, it will keep the two pieces together. So in transport or whatever, the uh, the ball bearings won't get lost, and it uh, will also prevent it from blowing off. I doubt that would ever happen, but it would prevent it from blowing away because the ball bearings are just going to be in there free and loose. And so that's my plan to keep it contained. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, welding this stuff now. I'm going to go ahead and weld this to the. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to do. I'm going to weld this collar on first, and then simulate where uh, where it's going to be on there. But I need to get the collar on there first. So we'll get on started on that right now. Okay, so I've got the. Uh, the washer clamp down. I'm going to just weld this together here, and this will form my collar.
So I've got the uh, wind vane uh, simulated up this clamp on a vertical here. And it's fairly easy to spin. I don't have any grease on here yet. I probably should do. And I've been experimenting with uh, where along here I should support it. And I want to try and get this to re this uh, silhouette to respond to wind just on its own. And so I think I've got it here. I've moved it slightly forward so there's more surface area in the rear than in the front. And I'll show you, uh, I'm a, I've got a little fan I can turn on and it, I can get this thing to uh, follow the, the direction of the wind. It'll point the Sasquatch in the direction of the wind. And it works pretty good, I think. Show you one more time here. I don't know how sensitive it's going to be or anything. Probably be a little better once I grease it up. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and weld all this together. Although I might try tipping it. Let's see. I'm going to tip it down a little and maybe make it more balanced. stepping into the wind so this won't be uh, perfectly level that's fine with me I'm gonna try it again uh, like that see if that responds any better Too. That works pretty good right there. So now I'm going to remove it. I've got two bearings in here that are uh, just floating. And then there's also, when I get done with it, I've got this wire retainer here that will get clamped onto this uh, pole here. And it'll clear the, uh, the collar, let it spin freely, but it won't allow it to come apart. So, uh, I'm going to weld that just like that, but I'm going to pull it off of here and uh, try to catch my two bearings. Here they are. So I finished welding the Sasquatch wind vane and now the, I've painted it black and it's uh, drying right now. It's about two feet tall and I think that's about the right scale for the roof of a house. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video.